So, thank you for coming in, Paul. Thank you for having me. How's South Start been? It's been great. Um, I have, I've only been here a short while, but it's been yeah, really nice. Beautiful. So you were just on? Yes, what, just spoke. What was, your, what was your panel or your keynote about? Um, really just focusing, I guess, on my journey and um, keeping here in, in SA and making it here in SA. Um, that's something that's really important to me and close to my heart. Um, I'm a fashion designer, so we um, produce all of our garments here in South Australia and run our business here, although it's an international company, we run everything out of uh, Adelaide. Awesome, fantastic. And Keegan, what do you do here? Uh, so I'm looking after all the speakers for the events. So uh, it's been a crazy two days. So uh, yeah, we're, they've all been on time and uh, we've had weather and uh, cars go missing and uh, yeah, it's been fun. <laughs> you know it's a good event when you're actually running on time though. That's very important at events. Running on yeah. time and making sure you know where everyone is at the same time. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. And we're all done now, aren't we? We're, oh, we're about to wrap up. We're we? about to wrap up. We have one speaker to go. And um, yeah, it's, it's been a great conference to celebrate South Australia and celebrate the things that we probably should be telling people, but we're not telling people. And I think that's super important. You know, we have so many great founders that are local doing it tough and saying, no, I'm not going to you know, go down that normal path of uh, Adelaide can't be done or I, I have to move to succeed and I'm going to show people that you can do it here mm. and if you've got the right product and the right team and the right messaging, you can succeed. And Paul's a great example of that. Thank you. <laughs> so how did you start in fashion, Paul? Um, I started at a very young age. I mean, I was making things from um, three years old, really, but uh, I started Palace Fashion when I was 17, um, just in my parents' lounge room and kind of grew it from there. It was sort of... Um, a situation where I thought I'll just get as far as I can with it because I was constantly told that I would have to move into state or overseas if I wanted to pursue a career in fashion. Um, and that's not something that I really wanted to hear. So I thought I'll just do the best I can. And thankfully, um, it's worked and Adelaide's embraced us and Australia then followed and the world. So we get to do some really amazing stuff, but um, keeping it here locally. And we work in couture, so it's um, a handmade product. It's, it's about quality and craftsmanship. Um, so I'm, I'm really proud that we've been able to, to maintain those skills here locally. And, um, you know, we're a team of 18 now. And so that's 18 people that otherwise might not have uh, the opportunity to do that kind of work and um, we're keeping that skill set alive here locally and um, hopefully going to grow the team further and further as, as, as we grow as a company um, and so that means those skill sets aren't lost. Mm. Fantastic. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I have heard that quite a bit from when I was studying and um, I, I studied film at Flinders University course, here yeah. and we have people tell us all the time, oh, like, if you want to pursue this career, you're going to have to go to Sydney or Melbourne. I feel like you hear that quite a bit in Adelaide. I feel like people in Adelaide don't, they don't, you know, fully appreciate what they have here and what, you know, what we could build here in terms of business. Yeah, and I think the world's so small now. Um, you know, I think as long as you've got a good Wi-Fi connection, it doesn't matter where you are in the world. Exactly. Um, and that's certainly the case for us. Um, certainly there are a lot of challenges that it poses, but um, I think... It, it outweighs everything, um, being able to, to do it here and um, have, I guess, that satisfaction of, of creating something in your hometown and, and being able to share that with your loved ones, your family and your friends. And certainly they're the ones that put me here. Um, I'm only one person. Um, I, I have a team of 18 people behind me and, and beyond that we have local media and um, all the local community and my family and friends who have put me where I am and have supported the brand for so many years and helped us to get to this point and, and will continue to help us hopefully to get to where we need to go. So um, there's something about that community spirit that is so special about Adelaide. Um, and I, you know, if I had moved interstate or overseas, I certainly wouldn't have that aspect of my business. And I think that's really what sets us apart. I can add on that as well. Yeah. You know, one member of the crew, I said to him at lunchtime, I was like, uh, what, what, what's going on? Like, you look a little stressed. He goes, oh, my girlfriend has to go to New York. And I was like, what do you, what do you mean? And he's like, oh, well, he, she got a call today. She's a freelancer in the film space yeah. and someone's working on a movie. And they said, look, we don't trust the post, so we're going to just get you on a plane to take the hard drive to New York <laughs> wow. over the weekend. And like that's just a great example of another industry that's absolutely crushing it here yeah. 
in Adelaide um, mm. and relying on your networks and relying on, you know, your family because if you can make it work, and yes, you have to travel and it's like, oh my God, I've got to get it back on a plane. But if you can make it work and your people are, that your network is around you and supportive, you can do it. It's mm. as simple as that. And you're right, like, you know, with, yeah, you do just have to have a good internet connection and you can practically work anywhere. Mm. Yeah, fantastic. So you do a bit of stuff with Canteen as well. Do you want to talk about that a bit? Yeah, so well, our first, very first show for Canteen um, was in 2007. That was like the, the very first show that I did. Um, and I thought because I'm having a fashion show, I would like to have some sort of um, charity aspect to it. And um, Canteen is something that's very close to my heart because they're um, in my family and um, friends. I know a lot of people that have um, in some way been affected by cancer. So I, that was my way. Um, as a young person of, of giving back um, and raising money for Canteen. Um, and so th that's something that I always hold um, very close to my heart. But then I was uh, awarded Young Australian of the Year in 2017 and I was speaking at an event and someone from Canteen, I mentioned our first show with Canteen and someone in the crowd was from Canteen and they came up to me afterwards yeah, nice. and they said, yeah, we've got your picture from your show um, in our office. And um, I said, I, I just recalled of um, a, you know, an instance where I saw uh, at, there was the clothing brand industry. They had um, just done a custom scarf for Canteen, a custom bandana. And I looked at it on the wall. I said, oh, do you think that maybe we could do that for our show? And they kind of said, oh, it's a little bit tricky. I don't know. Um, and so when I mentioned that to him, he said, oh, we'd love, if you're still interested, we'd love for you to do a, a, a bandana now. And I thought, sure. So um, we created one and um, it went on sale for Bandana Day. And it, um, by the afternoon, it had sold out online. So and my wife bought like five. <laughs> oh, <really? laughs> okay. yeah. Um, and yeah, I've been getting, I've been tagged in so many images of people um, across Australia wearing um, this scarf. And it's really a wonderful, a wonderful feeling. That's awesome. So I hope hope they've raised lots of money. And something that you may not have been able to do if you weren't here uh, here in South Australia. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, yeah. I think also, you know, setting the point of difference as well. When you are in Adelaide and South Australia and all the rest of it, you if you were in, you know, Italy, you know, or France, you know, you probably wouldn't stand out from the crowd as much. No, well, I mean, I remember being in Milan and people would say, oh, you're from Australia, what are you doing here? You're a fashion designer, aren't you? I said, yeah. Because <laughs> you're either a photographer, model, yeah. or it's in yeah. some part of the fashion industry if you're in Milan. So, um, yeah, and I, I think they get a bit tired of people <laughs> coming over for it, to be honest. I understand. Yeah. What advice would you give to someone that's looking to start a business and they're looking at going into state? Um, look, I think... It's not to, and you know, when I talk about staying, keeping it local, it's not to deter anyone from follow their passions. If, if your dream is to go overseas, then by all means, go for it. Um, it was just my dream to stay here. Um, I think anyone that is looking at starting a business or, or following a passion or their dream, um, I think they have to do it with all their heart and um, give it 110%. And it, it is hard work. Um, each and every day, you have to give it your all. And... You know, um, as I mentioned in my talk, my aim every day is to do a little bit better than I did the day before and, and be the best version of myself each and every day. And that's hard to do. And you can't always do that. Um, but if you want to reach your goal, that's something that you have to try and do. So I think anyone um, that is looking at moving overseas or interstate for their business or for their dream, um, you know, by all means, go for it. But just be prepared that it is, I think, having... Uh, moved overseas for study and everything um, it, it is hard and you are you do feel isolated and you do feel taken away from your support base but in some cases people don't have that support base that I had so uh, maybe it's a freeing thing to move overseas so everyone's journey and everyone's story is going to be very different from um, each other and and that's the beautiful thing of it I guess and that's what makes us all unique absolutely I think um, your story Paul in regards to starting at high school is fascinating because the podcast has actually been looking at children and, and what would you do differently and how would you inspire the next generation? I'd love your opinion on 
what you would do now or what advice you would give that 17 year year old self um, just about to embark on an entrepreneurial journey um, down down the road to success you know what Uh, if it was me giving advice to me I probably wouldn't say anything because I wouldn't want to change anything at all that's happened to me or in in my life Um, but to someone else I would just say give it your all be an absolute professional in everything that you do and anything that you present or do even if it's in you know and I say this to kids all the time even if it's in a maths assignment and you don't think you're ever going to use maths in your life give it your everything because everything that we do is a representation of ourselves and that was kind of my attitude always through school and that my mentality since year eight because I remember one of my teachers um, handing back an assignment to me and it was my favorite teacher and it was a um, society environment assignment and she said Paul this was good but it wasn't great and I feel like you kind of just slapdashed it together and I know you can do a lot better <laughs> because I know you and that really hit me really really hard because yeah. I felt terrible I felt like I'd let down my favorite teacher and from that moment I thought no matter what it is I'm going to perform my absolute best that I can. And so that's what I did each and every day in every assignment because I thought my work is a reflection of me. And so every time, you know, when I was starting out, I was a kid, I didn't know anything about uh, customer service or or whatever. And um, my business experience was my um, business, from what I learned in year 12 business studies, really, that's all I had behind me. So um, I didn't have retail experience. I didn't have anything. It was just going by what I would expect if I went to Dior or Chanel or wherever. That, that's the mentality I kind of had. So um, I think having that, that sensibility and that, that pride in my work and in everything that I do, um, having that professionalism, that's the, the main thing that I would say to young people is be professional. Um, don't you know if you're having a hard time of it or if if something's not working out don't fall to pieces you have to keep going you have to keep moving on because the world keeps moving and um you know you sitting and crying in a corner isn't gonna help the situation it's certainly not going to help you and and you know people in my case if i fell to pieces because a a dress wasn't working out well guess what that client's not going to come back to me next time for the dress so i need to make it work each and every time and I went straight into it with that mentality and I've always held that mentality and that's something that um, the business is based on. We, we have to get it done and it has to be right, it has to be perfect no matter what. And it's like with theatre and, and production, you know, the show must go on. Yeah. So um, I think that's, the, I guess, in back to the question, that's the advice really that I would give to anyone and if I had to give advice to myself, it would just say stick to that. Stick to the plan. Yeah. I um I think we've all got a story of some teacher that's done that to everyone. I was just about to say I I, I got chills. I was like, oh yeah, I've been there. <laughs> like the one the one that comes to mind for me was an uh, English assignment, and the the teacher came to me and she goes, Keegan, you're not gonna like it. I was like, oh okay, cool. I said, Keegan, you have a mediocre imagination, and I was like, okay, that. What does that mean? I'd better look that up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it stuck with me forever. And now if you, uh, you're in my circle, everyone's like, your imagination's amazing. You're like always thinking about different stuff. And all the rest of I'm like, no, mediocre. <laughs> mediocre. It's going to be with me for the rest of my time. Yeah, you gotta you got to humble yourself, don't you? <laughs> right. Unreal. It's those things that keep you grounded, I think. Absolutely. 100%. 100%. Yeah. yeah, you can't have too many people putting you on a pedestal. No, that's for sure. So for people that don't know you, Paul... Where should they go? What What's your message right now for t- the end of 2018? Um, you've got a couple of collections launching next year. Mm-hmm. Um, love you to tell us a little bit more about that. So um, we've got our spring summer collection coming out in January, um, which we're aiming to have finished by December actually. So it's full steam ahead for us at the moment. Um, and then we are presenting um, the autumn winter collection in Paris. So um, that's always a, a huge honor, but a, a massive undertaking because we have to somehow get this um, entire collections of gowns to the other side of the world. Um, so it's always good fun. The <laughs> one downside of being in South Australia. Yeah, it's, just, it's a lot of travel, um, but you know, we're used to it and we're, we're a few years in now. So it's kind of, we, 
my team and I know Paris like the back of our hand. And for, for many of them, um, coming over with us was the first time that they had ever been overseas. And now they're giving people tips on Paris and they're like, oh, go over here, go over there. They, they know, oh, they awesome. know it. So um, I guess that that's our main focus each and every year. They're kind of the, the biggest things on our calendar. Um, also Adelaide Fashion Festival, mm -hmm. um, which is in October. And that's been a huge platform for us. And so many designers, um, you know, we just had it this year in October. And we collaborated with the Adelaide Symphony Orchestra because our collection was um, inspired by um, the Nutcracker um, and Tchaikovsky. So we decided to have the, the Adelaide Symphony Orchestra playing live um, the, the score by Tchaikovsky while the models walked out, which was amazing. Wow. Um, but I was really, really proud this year because, um, one, we were at the very start of the calendar. So it meant I got to enjoy the week and I got to go to all the shows. <laughs> Normally we're right at the end and we were always sewing right into the last minute. Yeah. Um, but I was really proud because um, getting to see all the other designers here, um, particularly the SA Designer Showcase, there were 25 designers in the SA Designer Showcase. And I just thought that really displays how far the industry has come and how much talent we have here in SA and how many um, wonderful people, you know, there was um, uh, eyewear designers and um, ready to wear designers, children, um, all, 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 all sorts, shoe designers, everyone. So um, it was really amazing to, to, to witness that. And um, many of those um, designers that were showcased in the fashion festival are like myself, uh, locally produced. And um, so I was really proud to see that. So definitely Adelaide Fashion Festival is something that now I have to think of what we're gonna do this year <laughs> and yeah. in the next year, sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that, that's our kind of calendar for the year. And then in between that is all the clients and um, Dubai trips and um, international and interstate travel that kind of comes as part of it because we're in Adelaide. But it, it's all good fun. That's great. Awesome. Well, I think that's about it, guys. Thank you so much for coming on and having a chat with us. Um, Thank you for having good, me. Yeah, good luck in the future. Thank you. To, on to 2019. <laughs> it's good. crazy that we're at that, that end of the year. Oh, beautiful. No worries. <laughs> all right. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thank Cheers. you.